Learn how to use hatching and cross hatching. Last time, we used scribbles to set a tone. That was a bit wild in the strokes, and you might want a more controlled approach. That's where hatching comes in. This time, we're going to use a different canvas size. So I'm going to go out of the picture I got here and hit the plus up on top here for new canvas. You'll see a plus button next to that for an icon. And I'm going to tap that. And that gives me an untitled new canvas. Uh, mine happens to be set to the right numbers, but I'm going to type them in anyway. It's 1920 for the width and 1080 for the height. So let's type in 1080 here. And I'm going to tap on where it says Untitled Canvas. I'm going to change that to 1080. And we'll make that P for pixel. And so this has got a nice wide canvas for us. And you can see how nice and wide it is. That gives us room to do everything on one canvas here. So I'm going to scoot this over a bit. Now I'm going to go over here to Sketching in my brush library. And you'll see there's a Procreate pencil. And then just above that, there's a Derwent pencil. Which I'm going to use the Derwent pencil for this. Let's change our color to cool gray. We're going to use Blend It All, but if you want an eraser, I tend to just keep to the Vine Charcoal eraser. It's just find that easiest to use. All right, and we'll go back to our brush. And about 22% will work for this, so we're good for that. Okay. Now I'm going to draw a cylinder, but I'm going to leave one side open. So we're going to do like we've done in the past, is I'll just draw a cylinder like this. And I'm going to leave that one other side open. I'm just going to use the one vertical here. Okay. Now, hatching makes single lines instead of the scribble line we used last time. So I'm going to make a few lines and see what happens. So I'm just going to go like this. Okay. And if you zoom out, you can already see that it's starting to get some form of shadow there. I can even put a couple more there. And if I put more lines, it'll do the same thing. And I'm just doing a single stroke here now. And the more lines you do, the darker it gets on that side. Okay. So that's basically what we're going to do here. But you can also do it over here on the side over here. So if I just go like this. pull back you can see it's made that edge for you and so instead of actually putting a line there you can make it even brighter by just using the hatching to get it to show up the white part of this okay and again I can put a little bit more sketching in here too okay we've been using one color but you can also vary your colors now I tend to change my colors as I do this but there's some optical mixing so you can use a few colors and get some gradients from the colors what I mean by that is let's draw another one of these cylinders. And I'm going to use magenta for this. So let's go over here and pick up magenta. Or purple. Or some color like that, depending on your taste. Okay, so I've got the same box here. Okay. I'm going to move up my pencil size here. I'm going to go all the way to 100% size for this. And now I'm going to do some hatching here again. So let's just put a couple lines like this. And I can put more lines in like that as well as I go. And if I'm using my Apple Pencil, you'll notice I can also change weights on these. I can push them down a little bit more. But And I can do the same thing, keep going like that. Make shorter lines, and I can get even darker like I did before. You see that's coming along. Now I can also change my colors, so I can go here and pick a darker color. And usually that's how I'm doing this, is that I'm not going to just use the single color if I'm going to color this. I'll use multiple colors to get that color tone better. Maybe a little bit up here. Start getting it up there. And I'll go even darker. And throw a few more lines in there like this. Okay. But I can also use other colors. Now we've got a complement here of yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and use a yellow over here. 
and do the same thing. And I'm just going to start throwing some color in here and do that to the other side here. Then add some more yellow in here. Okay, and I'll darken my yellow. And I can put the darker yellow inside those midtones. And I'm going to go to the really dark yellow and throw that in there too. Maybe put a little bit of that in here. Pull this back up again for some of my midtones for this. And just draw some lines in there. Okay. And you can start seeing what's happening. I'm going to go back to my dark yellow and do what I did before. This time I'll just use the side of the pencil because I can just do a shading as well if I don't want to do hatching to get that edge there if I want to. Or we can do it with the same kind of lines we were doing before. Okay. Like that. Maybe a little bit of a shadow there. Okay, let's do one more of these. You can see what's happening. And I like to use color, uh, but as you see, it doesn't optically mix very well. So you're going to end up making patches of actual colors, not actually blending them together like you would with a pastel. So that's what's going on with this. Now I want to show you one more, because you can see these lines are kind of messy. There's another kind of situation where it's called cross-hatching, and that's when you start crossing the lines in different directions. But in order to do that right, you're going to want to do one thing, and that's make lines straight. Now, you could do it with these wavy lines like we've been doing, but a lot of people like to have more control over them. So what you're going to do is you're going to go over here to your actions, go over to preferences, and you'll see down towards the bottom gesture controls. And there's a whole bunch of these things that you can actually change your gestures on. But I'm interested in the one for quick shape here. And all the way on the bottom of that one, you'll see one that says draw and hold. And what we're going to do with this is bring it all the way down. This controls our quick shapes that we did in an earlier video. But what we're going to do is we're going to make it as instantaneous as possible. Usually you want to leave it around 0.6 to around 0.8, somewhere in that range for your delay. So it takes a lot more time to suggest that you're going to be doing that. And it makes it not so annoying when you're drawing. But we're going to show it all the way down to 0.1 on this. And let's see what happens. Hit done. Okay, so it's now time to do a little more drawing here, and we'll make another cylinder. But I'm actually going to bring down my size a little bit. Let's do it about 57, 56, something around there. And I'm going to start by making the same kind of cylinders we did before. And I don't like that. Let's move it over a little bit more here. Okay, it's the same kind of cylinder we usually do. Okay, so there's our cylinder. Now I can show you again how we're gonna be using this and I'll do that on that side for, for the background. Is you just have to hold it down for a very short amount of time to get a straight line. So you can make straight lines really quickly if you set that to like 0.1. And I can put a bunch of lines here and define that side, okay. Now, I'm going to use this like this. I'm going to start by making a single line right about here. And then I'm going to half that line. About. And then I'll take the space that I have left. And I'll half that. And then I'll keep doing that to start to get some semblance of the shading. And you can already see that that's going to work. Now I can go into other sets of lines and do the same thing. So maybe I'll do a, a line going, we got this horizontal line, so let's do some horizontal lines here. I can do a horizontal line like this and then do another horizontal line where they're in more density in the next layer down like that. And then the same thing with the next layer. And same thing with the next layer. 
and just keep doing this over and over again. And as you see, it's starting to show some sense of darkness as we get darker and darker here. So we're now crossed two lines. We can also cross more lines. We can start throwing some diagonals in here. And so I might, for example, start with this set here and start throwing some diagonals in. And then put more diagonals inside those diagonals. And you can see things are getting more and more like what we're looking for. And I can even go in the other direction, I'm able to a few this way. because I got that first line. I think I'm going to actually put a line in here. And then start putting more of these lines in here. And you may just use some places more than others. So it may, for example, only do over here. And say that maybe the top of the can is actually darker than the bottom. And so I'll have a higher density up here. You can start to start to see that there can be differences in density. Um, I'm going to make a couple more lines out like this, just to give myself some more shading. And you just keep building up like this. Now, as you can tell here, this takes a lot of work. This is not as easy as, say, charcoal or pastel, or even some of the paint brushes we'll be talking about as we go through things. So it can get real tedious. Some people like this. I'm not the biggest fan, but you can start to see what this will do as far as working with lines. And you can keep going back with different kinds of lines in different places to get different effects. Maybe I'll put some more verticals in here, for example. And you start to get a shape that looks like the other ones that we have here. Now, I'm usually not this patient, so again, this isn't a method I use frequently. I do use the other two on a regular basis, so I do use this one. I've done some really nice work with color pencil blending them together like this. And this is a classic quick sketch version of what I would be doing, and I use that often, usually in pen even more than pencil. For the challenge for this lesson, try taking a sketch with a trace or a freehand drawing and add some hatching or cross hatching. Use some color to make it look good if you'd like to. I find hatching again to be too much work. You might find it a relaxing pastime. You can use hatching techniques with pens that are quicker and create a different style than these. We'll cover some of those in the following two videos. So hit the rainbow pizza and subscribe so you don't miss any of these great ways to fast sketch.